The Transion Supremacy. Bakit nga ba kailangan natin pag-usapan ang Transion? Well, yung Transion kasi yung mother company ng tatlong brands na talagang paangat na dito sa Philippine market. Yan ang Aitel, Infinix at Techno. So sa video na to, alamin natin kung ano yung maasahan sa brand na to. Yung pros and cons ng pagbili ng isang Transion na device. Pero bago ang lahat, kung meron kayong matipuhan na phone dito sa video na to, ililink po yan dyan sa description box para siguradong legit at authentic lang yung mapagbibilhan nyo. But moving on, isa-isahin na natin yung mga brands ng Transion. Simulan natin with their entry-level brand which is ITEL. So itong ITEL, eh, medyo nagpasiklab recently dahil sa ITEL S23 Plus na release nila. And I can tell you guys na it's definitely one of the best value phones na nasubukan ko this year. Lalo na kung makuha nyo to at its promo price na 5,699 or even less kung meron pa kayong mga extra vouchers dyan. Now before the S23 series ng ITEL, eh matagal na silang naglalabas talaga ng mga budget phones. So nandyan yung mga vision line nila na na-feature na rin natin sa Pinoy Tech Dad. Yung mga phones na yun, truly affordable talaga pero medyo may kahinaan na. Kaya kung naghanap kayo ng smooth experience for your phone for casual use, eh, hindi ko pa rin siya mararecommend talaga unless hanggang dun lang talaga yung kaya ng budget nyo na nasa under 5,000 pesos. Kaya lagi ko sinasabi na wala kayong mahanap na super ganda ng performance at the 5,000 peso level. Pero this year, lumabas na nga yung S23 series ni ITEL and ito talaga yung medyo bumasag sa notion natin na Huwag na tayong bumili muna ng 5,000 dahil siguro kailangan na magdagdag ng konti sa 7,000 peso price range. Pero yun na nga, lumabas yung S23 na non-plus version na sobrang goods yung performance for its price na under 5,000 pesos. Naka Unisoc T606 na chipset which is again decent for its price and smooth pa rin yung overall experience kung casual user ka lang. And eto na nga yung pinakapasiklab nila, yung ITEL S23+. Plus. Merong AMOLED, curved edge display, slim design, under display fingerprint scanner, and Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Sobrang panalo talaga sa display pa lang. And tulad na sinabi ko sa live stream namin nila Sulit Tech and Paul Tech, this was not something that you could foresee na mangyayari in just a matter of few years dahil sobrang mahal talaga ng mga AMOLED displays from the past years. But now, nasa entry level na and nasa 5,699 pesos na price range. That is insane. Na meron pa rin pa ilan-ilan na nagre-reklamo na hindi daw maganda yung chipset. But guys, what can you expect from something that is in the budget level? Ina-expect nyo ba na may G99, G95 ito na chipset at 5,000 pesos? And syempre, maging realistic naman tayo sa expectations natin, di ba? Hindi na makatotohanan yung hinihingi nyo na better chipset at this price range. Pero mahalay nyo, in just a few years, eh baka naman pwede ng entry level yung Snapdragon 778G. Pero for now, eh hanggang panaginip na lang po muna yung mga nire-request nyo na better chipset at this price range. And for me, sapat na talaga yung Unisoc T616 sa ITEL S23+. Plus. Pero ano nga ba yung maasahan nyo sa brand na ITEL pagdating sa software updates, pagdating sa build quality? Well, first off, sa build quality nila before... Eh, talagang fully plastic lang yung body and yung back panel But with the S23 series, eh, medyo nag step up sila pagdating sa design, sa build Kasi at least dito sa body ng S23 Plus, eh, mararamdaman mo na may pagka-premium yung feel niya So I would say coming from ITEL, ito na yung magiging expectation natin na solid yung build nila at the entry level which is again not something that we expect from entry level phones and hopefully fingers crossed magtuloy-tuloy na ganito yung pasok ng mga ITEL models but what about the software actually ito na yung general take natin sa software ng Transion so mostly pag sinabi natin Transion devices eh medyo maraming bloatware na pre-installed and then, merong mga ads pa minsan-minsan sa mga pre-installed apps nila. Pero kung before na na-experience nyo na merong mga intrusive ads na lumahalabas, nagpa-pop out, 
This time around, wala naman ako napansin habang ginagamit ko yung ITEL. So wala naman biglang nag-pop out na ads habang ginagamit ko and tinitest yung ITEL S23+. Plus. Of course, mapapansin mo pa rin yan sa ilang mga native apps na pre-installed pero pwede mo namang i-disable yung mga apps na ayaw mong makita. Na pagdating sa software update, I speak for all the other transition brands. Eh, wala po tayong kasiguraduhan kung ilang years talaga yung ibibigay sa atin. Well, at least yung pinaka-promise talaga is one OS update. So, so I guess better than zero. Pero pagdating naman sa usapang software updates, as in yung regular updates para ma-fix yung mga bugs, sabi nga ni Paul Tech dun sa live stream namin, eh merong updates si ITEL from time to time. And this is the same thing with other transition brands kasi nakikita ko naman with Infinix, with Tecno, eh meron naman talagang updates na nangyayari. So to say na walang updates yung mga transition phones, is a big lie. But what is real, however, is that medyo limited yung OS updates dito. Yung ibang transition devices nakakatanggap ng one OS update, yung iba naman, eh wala pa. So, I don't know. So, kung nasa Android 12 pa rin yung iba and one year na nakalipas and wala pa rin Android 13, well, mahirap namang umasa pa. So, I guess dito sa OS updates, ang talagang nagtipid si Transion. Na moving on, pag-usapan natin next yung Techno. Na pagdating sa Techno, so far this 2023, meron tayong tatlong series na maasahan sa kanila. So meron tayong Techno Spark series, Techno Pova series, and Techno Camon series. So ang best nila so far is the Camon series. Na meron din pala silang flagship and meron na rin silang foldable phones. So meron tayong Techno Phantom series na sinubukan nilang ilabas dito sa Philippines but I guess it wasn't too successful kasi medyo konti lang sa inyo ang bumili nun and naiintindihan natin yon dahil nung nireview ko yung Techno Phantom 2 eh parang nabibitin pa ako for something that is a flagship device. So meron pa talagang kakulangan pagdating sa image processing ng camera nila but overall, the feel and the build and the design was absolutely amazing for a flagship device. Pero yun nga, on the software side, dahil nga medyo kulang siguro yung software engineers ng Techno, eh, kapus pa sila doon. So hopefully, magkaroon pa sila ng sapat na budget para ma-improve nila yung OS nila. And magkaroon pa tayo ng flagship levels na Techno phones kasi... Napahaganda nga naman talaga na mas marami tayong competition in the market dahil magkakaroon tayo ng maraming options and you know that competition is always good for the consumers. So sa flagship level, I would say hindi pa talaga ready si Tecno for that. Pero dito sa mid-range and sa entry level, I would say medyo maganda na yung hold nila dito sa market. So pagdating sa Camon series, napakaganda po ng in-offer na value ng Tecno Camon 20 Pro 5G. Ang ganda ng chipset and I'm sure marami sa inyo nakabili ng phone na to. And pinapanood nyo pa rin kasi interested kayo marinig ko ano yung thoughts ko updated right now. And speaking of updates, eh, meron tayong bagong update sa Tecno Camon 20 Pro 5G that allows us to use bypass charging. Now, meron nagtatanong paano nagkaroon ng software update na bypass charging yung Tecno Hammond 20 Pro 5G. Now, I'm not too sure about this, pero I would assume na meron ng built-in hardware talaga yung Tecno Hammond 20 Pro 5G and they just had to implement the software para ma-activate yung feature na yun. Now, I'm just guessing lang naman, I don't have a Tecno Hammond 20 Pro 5G to open up and make sure na tama nga yung hula ko. Pero kung meron kayong mahanap na video out there explaining the bypass charging ng Tecno Camon 20 Pro 5G, then please leave it in the comment section para mapanood ng lahat. But that is absolutely great kasi nadagdagan palalo ng value yung isang phone na already has great value. So mas lalong kaaya-ayang bilhin yung Tecno Camon 20 Pro 5G and I would still highly recommend it lalo na kung makuha nyo at lower than SRP. Lahat po yan, ililink ko dyan sa description box. Now by the way, I heard this from a friend in the tech industry na medyo nag-hoarding pala si Transion na mga 8050 and 8020 na chipset. So makikita nyo sila lang talaga yung gumagamit ng chipset na yan for this year so far. But there is a downside to that chipset and that's because it's overclocked. So katumbas kasi ito ng Dimensity 1300 and anything that is overclocked without proper cooling features 
eh, talagang maihirapan pagdating sa thermal. So, mapapansin nyo na mabilis uminit yung Tecno Camon 20 Pro 5G and even the Infinix Note 30 VIP dahil pareho lang sila ng chipset. So, if you're gonna ask me kung kaya pa bang mapalamig ni Tecno and ni Infinix yung 8050 chipsets nila, well, the answer is yes kung i-underclock nila but then magsasuffer naman yung performance. So, siguro itry nyo nilang mag-strike ng balance. Siguro gamitan nyo ng phone cooler para hindi gaano mainit yung performance. But this is definitely something that you can expect from 8050 and even the 8020 chipset from the Infinix 035G. But mamaya na natin pag-usapan yung Infinix. Balik muna tayo dito sa Tecno and their entry level. So, meron tayong Tecno Fova series and the Tecno Spark series. So, sa Tecno Pova series, ito naman yung parang gaming focus nila na entry-level devices. So, nasa under 10,000 pesos usually yung mga Pova series nila. We have the Tecno Pova 5 Pro and the Tecno Pova 5. Now, Tecno Pova 5 lang po yung nasubukan ko and it's almost the same as last year's entry with the Tecno Pova 4. So, wala namang gaanong big changes and I would still recommend the Tecno Pova 4 Pro kung sakaling yung Tecno Pova 5 ang pinagpipilian nyo. I would say maganda gamitin yung Tecno Pova series. Usually kasi dito nila sinasaksak yung mataas na battery capacity, 6,000 mAh sa battery capacity. And yung itsura ng devices nila for the past 2 years from the Pova 4 to the Pova 5, eh, talagang pang gamer yung aesthetic. So I would say this is targeted more at the younger audience na gusto talaga yung gaming, Mobile Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, and maybe some Genshin Impact but at the lowest graphical settings. And then finally, yung Tecno Spark series nila na unfortunately, yung na-try ko lang is the Spark 10 Pro but that is a great phone for its price. And lalo na kung mahanap nyo at cheaper pa ng 7,000 pesos na SRP nun, that is absolutely great. Napakalaki ng display niya and yung camera niya is actually decent again para sa presyo na makukuha nyo. And then yung selfie camera niya, meron kasamang LED flash. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung video ko noon, meron po akong i-link dyan para mapanood nyo yung pros and cons ng Tecno Spark 10 Pro. But overall, yun po yung maasahan nyo sa Tecno, yung tatlong series nila, and then yung warranty naman nila is usually merong 12 plus 1, so 12 months plus 1, so bali 13 months, 1 year and 1 month yung warranty. And then for the warranty, it's the same for all transition phones, meron tayong Carl Care. And again, 1 year yung support ng Carl Care. But mamaya pag-usapan natin yung weaknesses ng Transion brand. But before that, pag-usapan na natin yung pinakamainit talaga ng brand ng Transion, the Infinix series. So yung Infinix, I would say this is the Phoenix Rising, Infinix Rising, ang lupet. Marami silang ino-offer na napagandang value phone. And pinakita ko na sa inyo kanina, itong Infinix Note 30 VIP. Merong wireless charging for only 14,000 pesos. But the downside is that this is already phased out. Ganong kalupit si Infinix guys na kakalabas lang ng unit na to this year but it's already phased out after just a few months. Bakit? Well, that's because naglabas na naman sila ng mas matindi pa which is the Infinix 035G. And yung phone na to sobrang hype dahil marami nga naman talagang tech reviewers ang hinype yung kakayahan ng camera na to. And I would agree for the photography side, panalong panalo yung Infinix 035G. Kung may phone gimbal ka, I would say panalo rin yung video capabilities ng Infinix 035G. And I would say you need a gimbal dahil hindi po talaga stable yung 4K 60fps whether sa rear camera or sa front camera. So yung 035G, dito talaga ako pinakalamangha kay Infinix so far. Ang ganda talaga ng phone na yun, sa design, sa build, grabe. Hindi mo talaga i-expect na it's coming from Infinix, lalo na at dahil yung pinakaunang phone na nasubukan ko from Infinix was the Infinix 08 na plastic body lang and napakagaan and medyo kulang pa talaga pagdating sa quality. But this time around, binago nila yung pananaw ko sa brand nila. So medyo mataas na yung expectations natin sa Infinix this coming 2024. So hopefully magtuloy-tuloy na yung improvements ng Infinix pagdating sa mid-range line nila. Na hindi lang po sa mid-range nag-improve si Infinix dahil naglabas na sila ng Infinix Note 30 series and napaganda rin po. Nasubukan ko yung Infinix Note 30 5G na meron ng bypass charging at under 10,000 pesos. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung review, meron po tayong full review niyan. Panoorin nyo lang po dito sa channel. But that is an absolutely great value phone. 
And yan talaga yung impressive pagdating sa Infinix. They provide you with great value for the price. And while they're still using MediaTek chipsets, like meron pa silang G99, G96, G95 chipsets, that is all okay dahil nasa under 10,000 pesos lang yung presyo ng mga phones nila. And I can forgive that. Pero yung ibang phone brands kasi, eh, kahit na naka G99 or G95, eh, umaabot pa rin ng 15,000 pesos yung presyo. So, hindi po katanggap-tanggap pag ganun yung nangyari. Pero dito nga sa Infinix, tamang-tama yung presyuhan ng chipsets nila for their phones. And again, i-highlight ko lang, bypass charging at under 10,000 pesos. Panalo po yan. Na pagdating naman sa entry level nila, meron pa silang hot series, which is not really something that I truly like compared to other brands. Pero it's still there and it gives you a lot of options kasi meron silang three variants ng hot series nila. Pero yung hot series nila is something that I would only recommend kung sobrang limited talaga ng budget mo. Hindi mo na kayang i-extend pa para sa isang Note 30 series or maybe even the Techno Camon 4G series, di ba? So, pag limited yung budget mo, sure, pwede mong pagpilian yung hot series nila. Pero ang recommendation ko is you save up a little more para lang makakuha kayo ng Techno Pova series, Techno Camon series, or the Infinix Note 30 series. Now, I'm sure marami sa inyo magko-comment, Puya, gusto po namin yung Infinix GT10 na review. Pero guys, wala po sa Philippines noon. So, hindi ko talaga marireview yan unless mahanapan nyo ako ng link na pwede kong pagbilhan and pwede kong ma-review dito. But that's also gonna be pointless kasi hindi nyo rin naman mabibili locally dito sa Philippines unless gusto nyo mag-risk and bumili abroad. So, that is the dilemma para sa mga nag-aabang sa Infinix na GT series dahil wala nga po dito sa Philippines. But anyway, that is our quick overview of the Transion brands from Itel, Tecno, and Infinix. It's so, naulitin natin na napaganda ng value proposition na binibigay sa atin ng mga brands sa to. Maganda yung specs, maganda yung build quality. Surprisingly, nag improve every year. And then syempre, pinaka-attractive talaga is yung presyo ng mga phones na to. Now, the downside, however, is the software and the warranty. Now, they say na meron tayong one-year warranty para sa mga transition phones. But then, minsan, yung mga service centers, eh, kulang ng parts. So, hindi po palaging available yung mga parts. And para naman sa mga third-party technicians, ang palaging reklamo na nababasa ko online sa mga forums, sa mga threads, is that medyo kulang yung supply ng mga parts para sa Transion brand na phones. So yun po yung downsides pag bumili ka ng Transion dahil nga budget devices ito, eh medyo kulang tayo sa software support. But when I say software support, it's more of OS updates. And then number two, by dating sa warranty, eh medyo kulang pa ng available parts kung kailangan i-repair yung Transion nyo na phone. But overall, I would say Transion is in the right track so far. Parang ito yung Xiaomi before sila nag-boom ng todo dahil Paangat na si Transion. Makikita natin na marami ng tumatangkilik sa brands nila. And dahil nga yan sa very attractive prices, alam niyo naman dito sa Philippines, ang panalo talaga is what gives us the best value for our money. So hopefully na-enlighten kayo tungkol sa Transion and its brands, Itel, Infinix, and Techno. And again, lahat po ng links sa mga phones na nabanggit ko na baka interested kayong tingnan, eh, nandyan na po sa description box. And kung gusto pang manood ng mga videos ko para matututo po sa mga phones, may mga ililink po ako dyan. Panigurado, magugustuhan niyo yung mga yan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pilotak Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo. Without love